during that year. Like, here's here's the thing that I don't think again many people realize. So you publicly got destroyed online yep. when all of that went down, yep. but you had the privilege of since you're a very valuable person to a lot of people, a lot of people stayed with you. Mm. For me, a humble little editor like me who hasn't really got that much value in staying friends, I lost everything. I had many friends. I had many people who believed in me. I had many people who were happy for this job that I was doing. Many people were wanting to work with me and things like that. And I had great friends and I was the happiest I'd ever been. And then one day when I was in Paris, New Year's Eve editing that video, and then of course it ended the fallout afterwards, gone in a blink. People who I believe to be some of my closest friends I have not spoken to since. And other ones who were brave enough were furious. Mm. I had friends who punished me. Mm. Really traumatizingly punished that I do not even have the confidence to talk about now. And I was on my own for the entire year. The only friend I had was my girlfriend who even at the time we even had ups and downs and our relationship was over during that period as well and then the only other friend who I could confine with was my housemate who because of it she fucking hated me as well and she was stuck with me mm. for an entire year because she can get herself out of the lease and whatever and then I had friends who were stuck with me out of obligation and I knew they were friends of me out of obligation because they were yeah. also friends of the housemate and that torture of truly being on my own then led to me expressing everything in that documentary, focusing on that A plot, mm. because I finally had that opportunity to express. And it was the most cathartic experience I've ever had in my entire life. Mm. It was incredible. I remember drafting, let's just say, the Chloe sequence, that whole eight sequence where it just, everything made perfect sense. I fell on the floor crying because of like, I finally managed to express myself. Mm, mm -hmm. And then I think the biggest thing about it was if I didn't have the opportunity to creatively express myself, I would not be here. Mm. So as in, in contextualizing that, I wanted to be as a friend to Andy for his wedding. I wanted to be there for you for the fight. And in, in my mind, there was nothing else left. My life is ruined. Everything is over. It's time to go. And I knew exactly what to do. And I planned to do it on like August 27th, two days after your fight. I was, that was it, gone. And then literally you called me up August 27th or 28th or whatever. And it's like, hey, I want you to edit this. Because at the time I thought you were going to edit it. Mm -hmm. I thought you were going to be editing this and like, and, I, and like, it was another project that I was like, oh, I was, I'm not going to be able to express it because mm -hmm. like you edited the Be Here Tomorrow video. I wasn't emotionally ready at the time, mm -hmm. but there was definitely, I apologize, you probably never knew, there's some oh. resentment in the fact that you edited it. Mm -hmm. But again, I wasn't emotionally ready to edit that. But it was the fact that I edited this film genuinely saved my life. Wow. And that's why I was so passionate in not removing the footage and the content that saved my life. Mm. And it took me a lot of heart and a lot of just courage, courage to accept that as of now, that story is not going to be told. Mm. And the reason why I changed my mind is no one's really going to get the story that I told as much as I do. And so if I send this out, if we send that video out, people are going to be like, I didn't really get this bit. Or I didn't really get that bit. I got it. Mm. And so <clears throat> I think it's kind of better that it's not been out now because there was some hard cuts and there were some shots or moments where I throw you under the fucking bus in what we cut. And it was like, that was my emotional expression into mm. that. And I think, yeah, it's, I don't think many people would get it was a bit too pretentious, basically, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> it was pretentious, a bit too up my own ass, but I'm happy that I managed to express myself. And I can still watch it. <clears throat> if I feel down, if I feel confused, I can still watch it and mm. I can still go, mm. Hayden, you're really fucking good at what you're doing. You've still got a really fucking good future. Who gives a shit if no one's going to see this? You've done fucking great. Yeah. And you've got a great future. Just keep staying here. Yeah.